everyone welcome to my channel so this week I got a really exciting project I ordered a 1940s Marion Martin pattern from backroom finds and I will make sure to leave the link down below um, Stephanie Canada is the owner of and she has some wonderful vintage patterns. And I decided to start my foray into the whole vintage pattern thing with, um, with this particular one. This is pattern number 4975. And it is just a cute little dress. And I'm excited to get started on it. It looks fairly straightforward. It's got... Um, princess lines. It has some pleats on the skirt and um, what looks to be like a set-in sleeve. So come join me on my journey as I try to make up this pattern. I unpacked the pattern and here is what I have. This is the pattern instructions. They all come on one sheet. There is nothing printed on the other side. And then there is the pattern. And I've gone ahead and ironed out the pieces. But after being folded up for 70, maybe 80 years, those creases are pretty set in at this point. You may also notice that there is no writing on any of these pattern pieces. And that is because this is an unprinted pattern. That's how the majority of the patterns were made back then. And instead of printing, they used perforations in order to tell you what to do with things. So, for instance, on this pattern, this is the back. And you can see these dots going up. And these indicate where you're going to sew a dart. You may be able to see these dots over here. Those indicate that that needs to be placed on a fold. And also, there's the perforations that let you know that this is piece number one. So each piece is perforated with a variety of notches and dots and that sort of thing to let you know what you need to do with these different pieces. Now what I am going to do first is I am going to trace these pattern pieces onto this white paper so that I can preserve the original patterns. Um, since these have perforations to let you know where to mark them, I don't want to use pins and then like not know where which perforations were pin marks, which perforations are supposed to be part of the pattern, that sort of thing. So I don't want to ruin these original pieces, so I am going to trace them onto this paper um, along with all the markings and everything. And also then I can use this pattern that I traced off to make a muslin. And from that muslin, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and test the fit. Now, this pattern is pretty close to my measurements. This is a size 14, and if you'll notice, sizing was way different back then. But this is a size 14, a bust 32, which is me, waist 27, my waist is 26, and hips of 35 with a hip 7 inch below waistline. My hip line is actually eight inches below waistline and my hips are 36. So if I need to do any adjustments, I have a feeling it's going to be in the skirt portion of this dress. So I am going to get to it, trace off my pattern, and we'll see how that goes. And I'll show you what happens from there. Okay, it took a little bit of time, but I got all my pattern pieces traced out. I think there are eight pieces all together. The only difference I made was in this back pattern piece. I actually, this was supposed to go on the fold here, and I actually added a 5 eighths in seam allowance here, 
and it will be cut in two pieces because I'm going to make a back zipper on this instead of the side zipper that the pattern has. I just don't want to deal with a side zipper. And I thought about it. I was like, oh, you know, that's the way the pattern was written. Don't you want to maintain the integrity of the pattern? No, I want to make it easy on myself. It's not going to affect the design at all to have a, um, a zipper in the back. And I think it will just be easier to sew and deal with. My back skirt pieces, there are two of them and there is a center back. So there should be no issue in adding a zipper in the back as opposed to the side. Also, so when I'm, so now that I got all this done, I got my muslin over here and I am going to cut all these pieces out in muslin and then sew up the mock-ups. So I'm pretty excited about how this is all coming along. I took a look at the pattern, making sure, as I was reading through it, um, to make sure that I got the notches I needed to because it's kind of tricky there was actually on one piece a notch hadn't been um, it was a hanging notch <laughs> the hanging notch controversy um, I, I don't know if any of you remember the hanging chad controversy but anyway uh, I had to go I, I wanted to go through everything and make sure that I was correctly um, transferring the marks from the original pattern into my traced patterns. So I think I got them all and I'm going to go ahead and cut everything out and sew it up and we'll see how it fits. Okay, so this is where I am so far. I managed to put together the bodice and I'm doing it kind of nice. I'm kind of following the directions as if this was the real thing. I wanted to just work my way through it and see if I had any issues with the instructions. And I have done some things differently. And like I said before, I am putting a back zipper in here. So um, um, I cut my back pieces into two. What I'm trying to figure out right now is the front of the skirt. So if you look on the front of the skirt, there is definite pleating here, and these pleats are sewn down, um, not the whole way, but they're, they're sewn down partially, and then they're left open so that the skirt can flare out. And these, uh, this right here, is the directions for doing that. So I was trying to figure out what they meant by all of this, and there's they talk about these large dots, which I've transferred onto my fabric. And this is what I did. So this is the front of the skirt. This is the wrong side. And I sewed the center panel to the two side panels, which are these panels over here. I should have probably gotten my green mat over here so that there was some contrast on this. But... Then it says match the darts or the dots and base between them. So these are the dots from what I can tell. And what I think is going to happen is I'm going to baste between all of these. And then this is the center panel. And these are the dots over here. And then again, this is this side. So I think how that will work out is on this panel it will get ironed down like that and what will happen let's see if I can flip this over with one hand so I think that I think it's looking right because if I look at the picture here there's my ooh, come on come on focus focus there's my, it's one, two, three, there's my three pleats, and I have one, the center one, and then this one over here, and then right now I have these pinned down, but I think from about this point on, I'll be stitching the pleats down, but then this will all be open from down here, and then that will be the front pleating of my skirt. So I'm going to go 
and baste that and see how that works. And then if it does, I will attach the back of the skirt to the front and to the bodice. I've already tried the bodice on and it, it fits. It might need some fine, fine tuning, but it fits. And I'll go ahead and do that. Oh, you can hear my, can you hear my neighbor's vacuum? Uh, well, at least it's not at midnight like they usually decide to do it. But anyway, I'm going to go do this and try to get it all together and see if we can get a finished garment to test the fit. I have the mock-up all done, as much as I was going to do with it. Obviously, I'm not going to... I'm going to either have sleeves or no sleeves. Um, but the mock-up is done, and I am very pleased with it. I think it fits well. And I moved the side zipper to the back. That was no problem. I did not have to make any fitting adjustments whatsoever. However, there are a couple of things that I do want to address, and I'm really glad I made the mock-up because it has brought my these things to my attention. So first of all is the construction of this collar. Now the way they have that is this is a princess seam bodice and this collar is a separate piece which is faced and then basted to the top like I did here. I did not finish it off and to finish it what you are supposed to do is use a bias binding around the neck and I just think that that is I don't know that does not seem like the most efficient and effective way to finish this off so what I am going to do is I am going to take this pattern piece here for the center front um, section and I am actually going to add the collar to it so that this is all one piece and then I am going to make cut four and make a facing so I'll have two pieces and um, of the top fabric and two pieces of a facing which will probably be the same fabric but you can always do a a contrasting color or something like that for the inside here but anyway I'm gonna make a two um, two pieces so that I will sew them front sides together around here and around the neck turn it inside out and I'll have a really nice clean seam here and finishing without having to deal with um, 15 million layers of fabric here like like I would have to deal with with the bias binding so and I will need to add a back facing also to that so that's no biggie I think that's just a construction detail a construction preference I think that I'm going to do the other issue is the sleeve so it's it's a good sleeve um, I mean, there's really no problem with it. I didn't do a very good job of setting it in. But first of all, I think I would like to shape it a little bit. And I kind of ha have the other sleeve here so that you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So um, here's the uh, other sleeve. I, I, I intended to put it in, but I didn't. But see how I'm going to give it a little curve there to kind of bring it up. So that's what I want to do with the sleeve. And then the other thing is on um, this is this is meant to have a shoulder pad in it. And I am not going to put a shoulder pad in it. And so I don't want it to hang out like this. What I am going to, I want my sleeve to actually sit up at my shoulder. So I am going to move this in about an inch. Yeah, about an inch so that it's setting more here on my shoulder. I think that just be, um, and then it's just going to be like more of a cap sleeve instead of short sleeve that they, it has here. Now, I think this pattern has a lot of potential to do other designs with it. So, for instance, I think just for the skirt alone, this would make a really cute skirt. Just add a waistband. 
And also, I think if you got rid of the collar and just had it as a V-neck like this, um, perhaps using a contrasting fabric on these two panels and then had it sleeveless, I think that would be a cute summer, you know, a cute, um, another cute way to do that. So I think this pattern has a lot of potential to it. I'm very happy with the way it fits. I just got to make some minor tweaks to it and it will be good to go and I will cut it out and start sewing it in my... Um, garment fa um, fabric. Okay, so I have my muslin and I told you that there were a couple of changes I wanted to make. So let me show you what I did here. So the first change I made was I shortened the sleeve. I just felt it was a little too long. It didn't really suit me. So what all I did was this is a tracing of the original sleeve pattern. And all I did was draw a line, and it's kind of a, a has a bit of a curve to it. But what I ended up taking off was about two and a half inches from the sleeve, and so that was one of the changes that I made. The other change was, as I said before. This pattern was meant to have a shoulder pad in it. And in the 40s, they, they had big shoulder pads. And so the shoulder was drafted to accommodate that shoulder pad. And I didn't want to put a shoulder pad in. I still may put a small one in, depending on how it comes out. But I actually took a whole inch off of this shoulder here. I did it not only on the front piece, but I also took an inch off of the back armhole also, um, or the back shoulder, I should say. And so that was the other change that I made to the pattern. And then I think the most significant I change that I made to the pattern was this is the this is a princess seam garment here, so it, it gets attached like this. And so this is the center front right here. And in the original pattern, the collar, which is this piece here, whoopsie, let's um, which is this piece here, was meant to be a separate piece and then sewn on. And then it was going to be finished off with a bias binding. I just felt that was a really clumsy way to do that and didn't want to do it. So I actually took my separate collar piece here and attached it to this um, center front piece and so that it's all one piece. So that what I'm going to do then is I'm going to need to cut four of these so two for the actual garment and then two as a facing. And what I will do is I will sew, I will sew these two pieces together at the, um, at the center front, give that a good iron. And then I will come back, and I also had to make a back neck facing to go around here since I'm not using the bias binding. I forgot that was another thing I had to add was a back, um, the back neck bind um, facing for here. So um, for my facings, I will attach the neck, um, back neck binding here and then sew the facing to the bodice, um, I will come around here. This is where, you know, in the center back here where the zipper will be. I'll be sewing around the um, back facing, sewing here, sewing down to here, and then I'll have to very carefully um, sew, pretend, let's flip this over and pretend that that's the other side. So I'll have to sew it and then come over here and then sew back up around this side. And what this will do is this will just finish off this whole collar area so that there's 
not going to be any bulk. This collar will lay like this. You won't have any anything here obstructing the view of the collar and it will just all lay very nicely. At least that's the plan. So if you look here on the muslin, you can see how this was just a separate piece and the way you were supposed to do it was attach it. Um, this is just basted in right now and then go back and get bias binding and put the bias binding here and then the bias binding would be used um, probably come down to a V here like a um, like you would do a um, V neck to finish all this off but I just thought you know you got this you got this seam and then you got the bias binding it's just going to be a bunch of fabric over there and I didn't feel like it would lay nicely. So those are the modifications that I am making to my final garment. So what are my final thoughts about this pattern? Well, first of all, first of all, I just want to say that dealing with backroom finds and Stephanie, even though I've only ordered one thing from her, it was a very smooth process. Um, I immediately knew when the pattern had been sent, when it had been delivered and that sort of thing. So dealing with Stephanie so far, no complaints. And she has a wonderful selection of vintage patterns. Secondly, as far as sizing goes for these patterns, I felt that it was very true to size. And that is, that is something that I can't always say with modern patterns. I have a really tough time with modern pattern, patterns and having to deal with multiple sizes and lines and everything like that. And even though they may say it's for a 32 inch bust, there is so much ease in there that it's just ridiculous. And usually things just don't fit me well. So I do like the sizing with the vintage pattern, at least with this vintage pattern. I don't know if it's with all vintage patterns, if I just lucked out and got a good one, or if it's specific to Marion Martin patterns, but I certainly will give them a go. And I do like the sizing on them. So I did make a couple of changes as I noted in my videos. I shortened the sleeve on it. I made a facing for the collars here so I didn't have to do the bias binding that they talked about in the pattern. And I also, because I wasn't going to use um, shoulder pads, took in the shoulder. Oops. I'm groping my, <laughs> groping my, 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 uh, form here. Um, since I didn't use the shoulder pads, I took the shoulder in an inch on both the front and the back. And as far as problems go, uh, sewing it up, the, the instructions for the most part were, were clear. I had to do some, you know, head scratching when I was figuring out how they did the pleats here. But once I really paid attention and focused on the diagram that they gave, it was really no problem. And I really didn't have any problem with the perforations. You know, I was careful when I ironed the pattern out, even though it didn't look like I ironed the pattern out. But I was careful with that not to rip anything or get any water from the tank of the iron onto there because I didn't want to mess up the pattern. But I think it's always a good idea to trace off your patterns. I think that just worked well because I did make modifications and changes. So I wasn't temp tampering with the original pattern. I, I kind of want to keep it in its, you know, original state because it, it is vintage. And I did change it from a side seam zipper to a back zipper. 
I used the closet historian's method for installing the zipper and I um, I'll never have a problem with that. I will also say too what I do when I install my zippers is I put a very thin piece of interfacing right at the edge where the zipper is going to go and that kind of helps stabilize that so if you have a slippery fabric I would really recommend doing it like this fabric moves around it's a fairly sturdy fabric but it moves around more than a cotton muslin is so having that very thin row or piece of interfacing in there really helps stabilize it it helps keep the um fabric from shifting around and got me a nice clean zipper line. The other thing about this pattern is that I think it needs a belt and actually it suggests that you make one for it. So I did buy a belt buckle. I have enough fabric to make the belt out of this. Um, I just need to get some sturdier interfacing and also get some eyelets. I saw really good good tutorial on I think it's called Professor Pincushion in order to make the belt. If you go to my blog, my most recent blog post, I did my top 10 favorite sewing videos. So a lot of the links for all of these people, the Closet Historian, Backroom Finds, and Stephanie's channel, as well as Professor Pincushion are in that list. But I am very pleased with the pattern. I enjoyed making it. I think it turned out really cute and I will enjoy wearing it. So I'm going to give it a go again. And that is my wrap up for this 1940s Marion Martin dress. If you enjoyed this video and like to join me on my journey, please hit subscribe and the bell to get notifications when new videos are up. And if you want more contact, not contact. If, well, contact, yeah, I guess that applies too. But if you want more content, I also have a blog and my Instagram page and you can get the links down below. Thanks everyone for joining me. Happy de-stashing and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!